pzip is a cross-platform file manager and file archiver and i like it because not only has it got some cool features but it's also available and listed for freebsd let's have a look right uh in this video i'm going to do a quick look at pzip and if we do a search for pzip uh, in the pkg repositories on freebsd we'll see it comes up with three different versions now this is just the underlying uh, toolkits and that lot that he uses so we've got gtk2 qt5 and qt6 you know you choose perhaps whichever one you want i mean they're all the same really there might be some slight differences in how they look but the functionality is the same we'll have a look at the gtk2 version first and like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I can't go into every single feature of this program because, frankly, there's a lot. So I'll give you a quick uh, rundown of what it can do and how it can handle some basic things. But it's really something you should try. Just give it a look. Give it a, uh, give it a go. Or give it a once over and see if you like it or not. So now we're just going to start PZIP. And this is the GTK2 version. And it's uh, nice and clean, nice and neat, simple. It looks relatively simple before you start diving into the menus, that is. But yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. This is standard GTK look, I think. Then there's the menus, um, which we'll go into later. And quite a lot of options. And we'll just check out the version to see if it is. Yep, there we go. Look, FreeBSD, uh, GTK2. Uh, I'm running on KDE at the moment, so it's uh, release 9.9.1. Right, so here is the qt5 version and it's basically the same there's a slight difference in uh, perhaps a font size etc and there it is look qt5 so it doesn't matter which one you load up it's whatever you're most comfortable with and as soon as i'm using kde and qt5 then it makes sense to use the qt5 for me right before i ramble on anymore let's have a look at what it can do so here I have a folder with two files in it. I've got a GhostBSD ISO and a FreeBSD handbook. So what can we do? Well, just clicking on, double clicking, no, just double clicking on the GhostBSD ISO. It lets us change the lowercase to uppercase. Append a timestamp to the name, which can be useful. You can move it, append a directory name or prepend a directory name. So and you can reset it to as it was. So it really does act as a as, as a file manager, I suppose. Uh, if you hover over it, it gives you a brief description of what you're looking at and how it was compressed, etc. And you can extract, as I suppose you imagine, you will be able to extract the ISO to uh, a directory or its own directory if you want. And there's a command line if you want to do it that way. So... That's where it's going to go into PZIP examples. Uh, you can extract, extract without path, list, list, and test. I'm going to leave these at defaults, but you can uh, you can just delete the file after extraction and things like that. So it's 2.5 gigabytes to be extracted. And as you can see in the directory we were already in, you got the two existing files, but also you got a license and a copyright notice and the various directories uh, that were in the ISO. So you can highlight them and delete them. You can secure delete, which I would imagine will take quite a while. Uh, zero delete, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's also take a while. Or um, quick delete, which I think we're best off choosing. You can move to recycle bin if you wish. So, uh, yeah, and it's just gone. If you really want to make sure it's gone, then the other secure deletes is perhaps the best way. You can add to an existing archive or compressed file, or you can convert a file into a compressed file. So in this case, we're going to change the uh, the handbook, and we're going to, we're going to scrunch it up. Uh, can we, shall we choose? I think for now we'll, we'll choose the um, default zip kind of a ubiquitous uh, format. Uh, you can choose the speed at which you do it. I like to say the format, uh, the compression type, uh, function. You can add or new file. And, yeah, split. You can split them. So exceptionally a large file, you can split it. I don't need to change anything else. So what we'll do is... That's a better look. 
Now they've changed that round. You can actually see some of the options at the bottom. Oh, ZSTD. Oh, very nice. So still, I think we'll just choose the uh, the defaults, I think, like that. Right, so uh, yeah, that didn't take two seconds, did it? And there's the original file at 22.8 megabytes, and underneath is the zip file with 10.7 megabytes. We can try a different format if you want to, so we can size comparison uh, the finished result, because despite what they tell you, size matters. And let's have a look. So we had zip, we'll try good old gzip, another zip version. Eee. So we'll try that, and we'll keep everything the same so we don't uh, change anything. It took a little bit longer. But the file size is 10.4. Okay, that's just uh, 0.4 smaller. And we'll try another one. We will try an XZ. Let's see uh, how that's doing. And it's 8.7. So that's the most compressed of them all. That's the most efficient, maybe. Very nice. I won't try the others. I might do that for another video, compare file size, you know, of uh, compression types. But for this, it just gives you a quick uh, an idea. And it handles it all very well. So let's delete the everything but the zip and the original handbook PDF. I'll go up to that uh, quick delete. There you go. And, of course, you'd expect it to be easy to extract, so just extract, and it extracts it into uh, the direction we were. There we go. So that's um, that's pretty cool. That's what you expect it to do, and uh, that, that's what a program should do. It shouldn't have any unusual uh, extras that you don't need. This is pretty much all in one. It's like a... A file manager and a, an archiver, so you could you could live in this, I suppose, if you got some work to do. You know, if you want to arrange your files and uh, make sure everything's neat and tidy. So it stops you from like switching from uh, one archiver then to Nemo or whatever, then back again. You could do it all in one, which is a, a good idea. So if you want to add something to an existing zip file, uh, you just press Add and you select the file that you want, and then you press Add, and using. Uh, do you know, I wonder if you could just uh, leave it on XZ or do you have to change it to zip again? Hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try... We'll try something here. I'm going to drag over uh, the handbook and the Ghost BST ISO. Is that it? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to add that to the handbook zip. It takes a little while. We're going to fast forward. About six minutes, six and a half minutes uh, to complete and there we go. So now we've got a, 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 a compressed file using XZ. Tar XZ, it is. Which will contain all the other things. If I can grab all of it. There you go. I'll extract it this way. Also to mention that you can set a password or a key file if you want. I'm not going to do it now. But if you want to secure your, um, if you want to secure your file. Either in this program or any other sort of like... Uh, Archive manager, right? So we're gonna have a look at what's uh, What's available in the menus, you know, we've done some of the basic operations. So we're gonna have a look at the menus Let me a quick rundown So you can create a new archive update an existing archive convert obviously we've seen doing bookmarks history So these are all like your, your file manager uh, things bookmarks history, etc <clears throat> You can do your basic editing uh, If you want to change the dates and file size and stuff like that browsers Again, file manager type stuff. You can organize it again. Breadcrumb, that's interesting. Um, restart, okay, that's fine. You can, uh, there's your security stuff if you want a password manager. And uh, that could be quite useful if it's built into this. And your localization, change the settings and the way things look. And there, of course, if you want to do your updates, plugins, themes, and translations, which we won't have a look now. But there's quite a few, and it's a very extensible uh, program, is this. Although there are some things missing at the bottom, which is like your uh, PZ uh, additional things, which I'll have to see to later. But yeah, overall, it's, um, I don't know, it's, it, to me, I've, I've only just, I don't know where I've been, I've only just discovered it. I just saw it, uh, someone mention it on a forum, and I thought, oh, I'd have a look, see if FreeBSD's got it. 
and we've got it, and it's there. It's excellent. Um, so I'll, I mean, yeah, from the times that you're in the command line, you just want to, you know, you just do tar, etc. But for this, uh, if you saw like in a fully graphical environment like KDE, it kind of fits in there. And this is something which uh, I could see you, you know, like if you get install GhostBSD, I could something like that where you're very, I don't say rarely. I mean, it's kind of like sacrilege saying that you don't go into the command line using the FreeBSD, but if, say, for instance, it's for someone who's not comfortable on the command line, load this onto the system in, like, GhostBSD, and, yeah, I think they'll be all right. Anyway, I just want to uh, bring it to your attention. It's something which I haven't noticed before, despite me going through all the, the various listings, etc., in the uh, package tree. I just thought I'd uh, bring it to your attention. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.